Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and today we're going to be going over whether or not you can spray paint your RV, either to touch it up or to do the entire thing. Now for 95% of you watching this video, probably not. I would not recommend it. You're going to have nice automotive paint jobs on there with a clear coat and decals and typically it's pretty easy to mess up and even though spray paint would adhere to those surfaces, it's not going to have the same appearance and it's probably not going to match and I just wouldn't recommend it you're probably gonna to have to get a professional to do it. But that can cost anywhere from $5,000 to $30,000 to paint an RV professionally, where they're gonna strip it and primer it and use nice airless sprayers with high quality automotive paint and uh, put on new decals and uh, you know a clear coat and all that stuff, um, probably in an airless vented room to prevent dust and stuff like that. So it's a real process. My RV is 40 years old and I bought it for $5,000 10 years ago, so I'm not about to spend $5,000 painting it. So I just wanted to kind of clean it up and try and give it a little more life and this is what I did. And um, I'm actually pretty happy with the way it turned out. Is it perfect? No. Does it look way better? Yeah. So I thought it'd be fun to share that with you guys and I will give you some tips and tricks along the way in case you decide to go this route. Um, if that helps you out and I'll also put a link down below to some of the tools that I used, um, like, you know, paper gun and some good tape, painter's tape, stuff like that down below um, on Amazon if you're interested. So without further ado, why don't we get right in to this very long process of slowly painting my RV one little tiny section at a time. So I actually found some old footage from the first day I actually bought this RV. So this is me picking it up and you can see the lines are really faded. The Jamboree's completely faded out the logos and it's got some spots on the paint. It just, it looks dated. And so little by little, I started just fixing this guy up. For example, this was just me doing one stripe uh, this one day. And what you want to do is lay down a lot of paper because that overspray really goes everywhere. You probably want to do it on the top too, but I had it taped up top and there was no wind. So, I mean, I felt pretty confident with that and it worked out just fine. I also did a little bit of beige on the bottom kind of skirting area, the bottom of the RV there, just to kind of clean some of that up. And uh, that was just one stripe for that particular day. And then here's a little tip for you. When you're putting on the tape, I learned this early on, if you don't want bleed through, which is where the paint goes underneath the tape and gets into spots you don't want, put it on very carefully with your finger, but then take the roll of tape and just mash it against your uh, applied tape and just pull it all the way down. And that really gives you a nice tight bond so you don't have any bleed through. I also highly recommend getting a paper gun. It automatically attaches the tape to the paper and you can just roll it out. And then it has a, a nice cutter so you can just kind of tear the paper and usually it cuts it really straight, but I, I rip it here in a second. But it's a great way to apply and cover large areas uh, very quickly. And then you always wanna make sure that you attach that with a second roll of tape on the bottom. That usually cuts it straight, but I messed it up. But you always wanna tape down the bottom because otherwise inevitably a gust of wind will blow that paper up into your paint and it ruins everything. So always make sure that you cover and tape the bottom of that paper as well. Um, and again, just I kept working my way around doing different uh, stripes. And after about three coats, I would say I would usually be good. And I like to pull the tape off right after I do the third coat. So you don't pull tape off. You know, if the paint dries on the tape, you can kind of tear it and pull it away from the areas you don't want. So I like to remove it kind of right after the third or fourth coat, whenever you're happy with it, I pull the tape off. You got to tape every little thing, every little keyhole, every little anything you don't want paint on, you have to cover um, with some tape. Now, I don't use paper a lot in my application, but I highly recommend you do. Uh, the method I used here, because I didn't have paper this day, uh, or most of the days, was just kind of uh, folding the tape in half so it kind of makes a little lip. And that would keep a lot of the spray from just kind of drifting down and maybe sticking to the beige areas I didn't want. And so that was my method. And then you just want to really, really lightly apply your first coat of spray paint. I mean, you do not want coverage. You just kind of want to make everything kind of tacky. You just barely want to cover the surface with a really light coat. Wait about 10 minutes until it's nice and kind of tacky and sticky. And then you can go a little bit heavier and not worry so much about the paint running and dripping down the side of the RV because it's not flat. Um, so gravity is going to be pulling on that paint. And you just want to do lots of little light coats and that's going to avoid runs and drips, which are a nightmare. It's really hard to fix that stuff, so you gotta be really, really careful. 
Now here you can kind of, this is my first heavier coat, and you just want to push the button while your, your can is in motion. You don't want to hold it down and go back and forth, or you're going to build up bigger sections. So you can see I'm press, press, press the button, and that way you're not going to build up while you stop and change directions. So you just want to be in motion when you push the button, and uh, that's going to hopefully help you avoid drips and runs as well. So. This is the first kind of second coat, I guess, uh, where I put it on a little bit heavier, and I'm gonna do a couple of these. I think I did three, and now I'm gonna pull all the tape off immediately, so you can check to make sure none of the paint uh, maybe slipped under the tape, and if that's the case, you can quickly get it with a wet rag, and if that doesn't work, you can carefully remove it with just a razor blade and just kind of gently scrape away at it uh, so you don't mess up the underlying paint, um, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna put back on my new water heater door cover here that I painted separately, and that looks pretty good. Now for the logo, these are pretty labor intensive. I covered these with the blue painter's tape and you can actually see the decal underneath. And so with a brand new razor knife, I very carefully went around and cut these out. And if you happen to cut a little too much away or maybe some of your tape rips, don't worry, you can just add another piece of tape like I believe I do here at the top of the A right there. So you can just kind of just play with it, add tape, remove tape until you have exactly what you want going on there. And you're gonna to wanna to be careful not to damage the RV with that razor knife. So, I mean, it's kind of an exact amount of pressure uh, just to cut enough of the tape, but not to leave gouges in your RV. And you can see I'm filling the little gaps on the M. We're gonna add some more tape just to give me a, a bigger buffer. And I've, I furled the tape on the bottom out so it catches the overspray. And we're gonna do one kind of light coat, just nice and easy. And then we're gonna do another coat. We'll go a little bit heavier on this guy, just kinda of keep applying it. And we're gonna do three nice big coats now. This is the last coat going on. And once we have that done, we're gonna let it sit for about a minute, and then we're gonna start removing this tape, being really careful not to let the tape hit the wet paint areas that we don't wanna mess up. Now, around the J, I had some bleed through, as you can see, where the, the paint got under the tape but I just removed that with a little rag on the end of a screwdriver for precision, or used a nice little razor knife and just kind of removed the paint gently. And uh, it turned out pretty good, not bad. So now it looks nice and new. Now I just have to do that back quarter panel. I've got both the stripes done, the logo done, and that first panel. So I'm gonna tape off the back panel, do that again. And there you go, It's it's got a nice color to it. It's not an exact match of the Ford Brown, but I got pretty close and I like the golden color. Now for the back, I did do the body of the RV. So that entire back, you can see the jamboree is just completely faded out. And uh, the, the back wall, you can see the fiberglass. It's so sun faded and beaten up by the sun. And I didn't want to mess with redoing the entire logo um, up there again, because I couldn't even see it through the tape. So I took regular latex exterior beige paint and just applied it with a brush and roller added some new marker lights, and I think it turned out pretty darn good. It doesn't match the sides exactly, but it's close enough for me. I don't think anybody really notices unless you're looking at this cross section here, and even then it looks pretty darn good. That's two coats of exterior latex, uh, paint for the back, and then we went from this, which is the first day I bought it, and now I'm gonna show you the after I did all this painting. And this is today, this is just yesterday that I shot this and the RV hasn't been washed in about six months, so it's even dirty right now. But as you can see, the paint's not flaking off, it's holding up really well to the sun. It looks a heck of a lot cleaner than it did. You couldn't even, you could barely read the Jamboree uh, logo before. And I mean, it's holding up just fine. It's a little, it's dirty because I haven't washed it, <laughs> which I probably should have before this video. But yeah, as you can see, the paint's holding up pretty darn well. And so we'll kind of just walk you around here. This is the other side, the side that I showed you uh, being done. And this paint has lasted, um, the first section, the first logo that I showed you was uh, about two and a half, three years ago. And it's doing just fine. And this side was done about, I'd say about eight, nine months ago. And there you go, I think it looks pretty darn good. Well, there you go, guys. Is it perfect? No, but does it look way better? In my opinion, yeah, definitely. I think it cleaned it up a lot. It doesn't look like a 40-year-old RV. Now it looks kind of like a 20-year-old RV. So, I mean, I did this really slowly in little sections as I could. I mean, some days I'd just do one stripe 
and that was it. And then that stripe looked brand new and uh, the rest of the RV looked dated. And I just did a little section at a time whenever I had a completely windless still day. Um, you really gotta watch out for overspray on this stuff. Use paper, use lots of tape, give yourself more room than you think because paint will find a way to get onto other spots if there's the slightest breeze. And so you have to be careful with that, but I really enjoyed it and I think the RV looks a lot better. Will this help most of you? Probably not. But will it help some of you? Maybe, I hope so. And if it did, please like, share, subscribe. That really helps me out. And um, use my Amazon link if you're gonna buy paint or materials. That really helps me out as well. I get a small commission for that and it costs you nothing extra, so that's nice. Um, that about covers it. So until the next video, thank you so much for watching and happy camping.